hello. So I wanted to make this blog video and talk about why I have started Syllable Studios. Um, have you ever had something burning deep inside of you that you just like you could just couldn't ignore? Um, and I want to tell you my journey of syllable because that's exactly what it was. It's just like this force that was guiding me or that is guiding me. It's a force that is guiding me now. And, and I really believe in the impact that it can have on society. And this is the journey I want to talk about syllable studios it's a science fiction and fantasy production house and really this is one of the first of many video blogs vlogs blogs vlogs i don't want to do to document my journey being in la and trying to not try I, you see there's something i want to remove from my vocabulary is the word try it something it's all these mental impediments but anyways um have you ever had this burning desire to accomplish something bigger than yourself in, in your dream? It's something that you couldn't stop thinking about. You wake up in the morning, you feel like if you're not doing that thing, you feel unfulfilled and you're not connected to what you want to do. That was that thing for me. Initially, my journey began in Washington, D.C. I believe wholeheartedly that the institutions uh, right now could create the level of change that I had in my mind in terms of why is there deep poverty? Why is the planet in decaying and collapse in terms of climate change? Why are animals becoming extinct? I think I, I narrowed it down to human behavior and policy and, and international affairs could be a vehicle for that. And I think while I worked in DC international relations, I, I really felt this need to align my own creative expression much deeply towards that burning desire um, and really uh, growing up after I moved to the US when I was 13 a lot of my time was spent at the library I was reading a lot of comic books I was actually I was one of the folks that put the books away I forgot the word for it but I worked on it pretty much every week and even on weekdays as well at night I would volunteer at the library and it was my refuge away from like the trauma and being in high school and the uh, in a space where I didn't speak the language, nor understand, understood the culture, or even going at home where everyone was dealing with their own demons. I think the library became my refuge. But what I realized is when I started reading a lot of these books, it opened my imagination. It allowed me to, un to create more meaning for myself. But a lot of the challenges were, for example, science fiction stories when I would travel to other planets. A lot of the people actually all of the people didn't look like me at all. Uh, so I was more of a, of a watcher than someone. I was, a, of, I was rather a watcher of those realities than a participant. So I wanted to write more stories. I wanted to tell better stories. I wanted to tell new worlds and new imaginations that could allow people to change the way that I had changed. Because when I, when I moved to the U.S., I, I had a lot of just like energy and trauma that was like, stuck inside of me and and these stories allowed me to express myself see something that i didn't see before um and when i set in my like when i set in my journey to write like it, this journey was very much like it was probably one of the hardest journey and i'm still going through it right now so it, it started when i got the fellowship uh with pen america so I, PIN America is one of the largest literary organizations on the planet. You're probably more known by like the awards that they give, like the PIN awards. So I hit, I saw a position on Twitter and I applied for the position and they told me they were, I was the exact person that they were looking for in terms of being able to speak the language, being able to um, have a passion in writing and culture and creativity. Uh, and I applied for the position. And I actually went to Haiti and it was the first time since I was 13, I went back home and it was a transformational experience. I lived on the top of a mountain in the Penn Haiti Center, had about 2000 books, uh, four computers that young kids and children would come in over the weekend to work on or even workshops from local poets and novelists and writers. Really, I got to soak in my energy and, and 
to my country and how I've evolved internally. Um, but what I began to realize is that that I needed to write and I needed to do it like consistently. And I wrote two novels. I wrote two novels while I was in Haiti. <laughs> and I came back to the US and it was the time where I was looking for other job and I didn't end up finding a work experience um, but on the side, I had been working to edit those novels and I had find a lot of just pain points, just trying to edit the chapters and trying to find a community, a meaningful community that can help me go through the process. In the publishing industry, you already know, like there's a diversity problem in the publishing industry and how the books, sci-fi, fantasy books, um, or even literary fiction books are published. So. I, I came through a mountain of, of pain points, but it wasn't until where my entrepreneurial endeavors in this fast changing world, um, in terms of, in terms of just, just, we just don't live in the 1980s anymore, nor do we live in the 1920s and time and, and society is changing so fast. And I wanted to create something that could really honor this space for my own, my own creative expression, but also my, my vision for a better world and a better future. So I started to see a lot of storytelling as a capacity for that change. So when I was in DC, I ended up creating a survey monkey. Um, and the original idea was, let me connect this freelancer to a, a someone writing a book, and that would be a, a two-way marketplace. There's a demand and then there is a um, there is a product and a service that's being met. So I ended up doing a survey of about 30 to 50 people who are creatives, who are writers, artists, and surveyed them about the product idea, but also like some other questions, personal questions. And once I, I didn't really know what was gonna happen from that survey because I thought something would come out of it and it did. And I started to analyze the data and what I got back from everyone that I knew and they all had the same problem. A lot of people suffered in their creative process. And if I went to the same, pro I'm going through the same process too. So not being held accountable to someone else, not having enough time. We always put off our creative expression because something else comes up. Uh, we don't enjoy the pain of sitting down and creating something um, and dedicating our life to that thing. Um, another thing was the industry did really understand the publishing industry and how it functioned. And I think the most important one that is writing was a lonely experience because they did it by themselves. Um, and in thinking really deeply, it's collaboration came at the top. But after talking with a lot of people, it's like to debrief these ideas, it's like collaboration came at the top as a hypothesis to really test what this could be. Um, and what I started to realize is that writing fiction with other people is not a popular thing to do. The majority of artists today be believe and live in the classical way of doing things and they haven't really adapted to the democratization of writing that we see or democratization trend that we've seen in the internet. Um, and that was the idea. It was just like, okay, how can we do more collaboration? I've seen it in Hollywood and they've been able to produce some really great shows and and then also in film or you see it a little bit in science fiction where people are collaborating on books, but it wasn't there wasn't it's not really a culture. People don't do that. So initially I did a research and I got five little bullet points um, around what makes a good collaboration. And I got three people in my living room in Washington, D.C., in my apartment in DuPont Circle and got them, I bought raisin, coffee, tea, snacks, cheese, and make them comfortable. It was a Sunday morning in October, 2017. And I gave them that piece of paper. One, and there were three writers at different stages of their journey. One was, was doing his master's at Georgetown University and had written some plays before and won a few awards. Another was uh, a friend who quit his six figure job, went bicycling across the country and throughout this entire journey, he wrote like a memoir and then he came back and he moved to, um, I think he's in New York now, but he moved, he was in DC and, and I, he's very passionate about writing. And the last one was, uh, I went to Florida state for my undergrad and, and while I was at the DC black film festival, 
I saw her and she's a Cuban American and I told her about, hey, I'm doing this project, this creative experiment. I don't know where it's going to go. And she accepted. And all these three people from different walks of life came in my living room and I wasn't really sure what was going to happen. <laughs> they would probably think I was crazy, but I was like giving them all their food on the table. So they're probably like, okay, free food. But anyways, what I saw after was just a lot of magic. Three strangers who didn't know each other started talking about philosophy, history, personal history, their own experiences, their their own worldviews, political, um, all of it just kind of came together and how they designed that world and how they designed the characters in their short stories. And in two weeks, they ended up creating a short story together. Um, and I learned tremendously a lot about it. I even saw people, they were one of them, The he ended up starting doing theater and playing in terms of positioning where the story, the characters would be placed. It was amazing. It was extremely magical. I was like, this is it. This is the birth of syllable. Uh, but I think the, I think after they worked on that one story together, I repeated the process uh, six more times in person and then also online. Um, and what I ended up realizing is that a lot of people had a lot of fun and a lot of the pain points that usually was tied to this, it, a lot of the pain points that I saw they were facing were almost met. It was like a social experience and they were writing a story together and they were able to do it faster, better, smoother. And I was like, can this be scaled up? Can we have a technological platform behind this? Can, can this be automated or can, this, can, can we even connect writers across different countries like what are the possibilities of bringing creatives to collaborate and create works of fiction so i i was just like i had i had a blast doing this and that was sort of the journey how it expanded and and i started hosting meetups in dc inviting writers to collaborate with each other create imaginary fictional worlds um, we started as a publisher and then we went more into the production side of things because we felt like a lot of what the writers were saying were that they like what the ideas, uh, like they like the ideation phase of like coming up with the ideas, breaking that writer's block and then going separate ways to write and then coming back. And that was sort of the process, the, the nexus of how syllable has evolved today. Um, yeah, I always believed in the power of technology to connect people. I always believe in the power of entrepreneurship and trying to create new systems that can render old system obsolete. Um, I, 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 I truly believe the like, final frontier for our planet is in the hands of storytellers, in the hands of artists. And right now, Syllable has, is a small community of speculative fiction writers who are coming together, who have created many fictional worlds and through that world building it's sort of the sandbox to invite other creators because i think my my intention coming to la is very much trying to look at it from the multimedia angle because i think a lot of the writers are <laughs> writing for a dying industry um, especially the sci-fi and fantasy i don't want to say sci-fi and, and fantasy is dying but i'm saying the readership is going down you can even go online right now i to back this up, Locust Magazine comes up with a report every year of all the speculative fiction magazines in the in, in the field. And a lot of them have closed down. And even editors of these magazines can't even pay themselves. Yet when you look at companies such as Netflix, you look at Disney, you look at the streaming wars, you look at the games. Games. <laughs> like science fiction and fantasy is thriving, I would say. So I, I think a lot of the next stage of the Silver Studios here in LA is trying to establish a steady footing around how can we enable critical partnerships and get those worlds like to really expand through bringing different types of artists from different mediums and expand that world and, and build an audience, start a conversation and help us to really reimagine something different. I think I've... I think this is the first time I've ever been this close to really, tr really, really, truly impact the world fundamentally. And I think it's very possible. And it's in the hands of writers. It's in the hands of creativity. It's in the, in the hands of our ability to see new realities.
Um, and I think that's 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 what Civil was all about is is to bring more black and brown and underrepresented voices to the table is to get those creatives thinking and telling about their experiences. Um, yeah, this is this is I think this is the, the beginning now. I think a lot of the last three or four years have been this experimentation of like connecting with writers and and building these partnerships. But now I think it's it's about something bigger now. It's about really looking at it from the sense that we can make collaboration work and this can be the world that writers live like can you imagine now writers of the future believe that collaboration is the norm that they have to work with other people from different countries i think that's pretty cool i think that would be a really 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 great reality to live in and i think it would be a more fun and exciting reality um yeah so this is this is one of the one of the vlogs that i'm doing i'm going to try to keep up with this despite with life and everything happening. So we'll see. So thanks for tuning in and please subscribe to my channel, please. You'll find more updates and more things that I'm going through uh, throughout my journey here. And and I'm keep saying and, 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 and. Um, yeah, so subscribe. Subscribe to my newsletter, support me on Patreon as well, support me online and yeah we'll see how everything flows peace